Guys, welcome back to the show. I'm Bob K6 UDA, and today I have for you a beginner's guide to shit hits the fan radio frequencies. This time on K6 UDA Radio. <laughs> Let's do this. All right, guys, welcome back to the show. Like I said, today, it's a beginner's guide to shit hits the fan radio frequencies. And I'm not talking just ham radio. I'm going to be talking about CB, GMRS, uh, FRS, MERS, all of it. So stick around. We're going to get to that in just a minute. But before we do, help me help you. This is free. Like, subscribe, share, leave a comment on this video. That really helps. Also, you could follow me over on uh, Twitter, aka x.com at Gray Man Survival. Uh, all the other good things uh, the Monday Nets, the Saturday Nets. And you can learn more about everything at s3films.com. Now, back to the show. All right, guys, this time I'm mainly talking to the beginners. You're probably not a subscriber here on, uh, on the K6UDA radio channel or the K6UDA guns and ham radio because you're new. To this whole thing and maybe you're just learning about radio maybe you're just curious about radio but let me tell you something the reason most of us got into radio isn't for the pure sport of radio it was originally at least for the emergency aspect of radio and today i want to talk about uh places in radio that you could generally use as a uh, as an accepted means of an emergency frequency. Having this entire spread of frequencies, uh, the entire spectrum of the radio, is not much good if nobody hears you. If nobody else is listening to you on a particular frequency, then that frequency is not doing you a bit of good. So let's go through. Some of the uh, some of the big ones, and we'll get through some of the other ones that might help some of you guys that have some radio experience, and you're looking for a little bit more in the way of radio prepared. All right, the first one I want to talk about here is probably the most benign. It is MERS, multi-use radio service. MERS uses five VHF frequencies. They're in the 151 megahertz band, uh, requires no license. It offers a range of two to 10 miles. And that depends on the terrain and your equipment. For emergency use, the accepted channel or the accepted frequency is channel three. That's at 151.940 megahertz, 940 megahertz. That is unofficially considered the MERS emergency frequency uh, by preppers and other outdoor enthusiasts. Kind of, you know, channel three. Everybody's going to monitor channel three. So I suggest if you're monitoring MERS, maybe you monitor channel three instead of some other channel. You might help somebody else out. All right, next up is GMRS. Uh, that is the General Mobile Radio Service. And guys, I lump FRS in there, but uh, GMRS has higher power, uh, higher power limitations. You've got to have a GMRS license, no test, but you got to get a license. Uh, GMRS operates in the UHF band. Uh, that is 462 to 467 megahertz, requires a no-test FCC license. Uh, it's popular with families and group communications, has a range between 5 and 25 miles. Let's call that 1 and 25 miles, depending upon the terrain and what you're doing. 
Uh, channel 20. That is, uh, the frequency of channel 20 is 462.675 megahertz, unofficially recognized as the GMRS emergency and traveler assistance frequency. It's often, uh, often associated with a GMRS repeater and those would have a tone. They suggest a tone of 141.3 Hertz, uh, for repeater access, you'll have to check your uh, local listings and see if there is a channel 20 repeater near you. Now, like I said, GMRS shares frequencies with FRS, uh, family radio service. GMRS needs a license. FRS doesn't need a license. Uh, the advantage of GMRS over FRS, obviously, is the fact that you could use up to 50 watts uh, on some channels. And it makes repeater work on GMRS very, very easy and very robust, almost like ham radio for emergencies. All right, next up, let's talk about CB radio. CB operates on 40 channels in the 27 megahertz range and requires no license. Uh, it is widely used by truckers and off-roaders, but it has a limited range, typically 3 to 20 miles. And I know a lot of guys put linear amps on these things and they're broadcasting or they're using that radio system across country. It's almost like 10 meters. So, channel 9, uh, 27.065 megahertz, officially designated for emergencies and assistance. It's monitored by some REACT groups and highway patrols, although activities varied by region. Channel 19, 27.185 megahertz, unofficial traveler's channel. Uh, this is for road updates. It's not an emergency channel per se, but it's heavily used. And in an emergency, you would probably or more likely be able to get a hold of somebody else that could then either summon help or give you help. Now we make our way up to the ham radio world, guys. Uh, ham radio frequencies for emergencies vary by region and band, and you're gonna need an amateur radio license in order to transmit legally, unless it is a life and death emergency. Then again, Who's going to pay for a ham radio, buy a ham radio without a license and just use it in that life-threatening emergency? I don't know. Maybe you will. These are some widely used calling frequencies and they're centers of activity for emergencies. They're often monitored by other hams. On two meters, uh, the two meter calling frequency. It's the national simplex calling frequency 146.52. This is monitored by thousands and thousands of hams across the country, uh, in the United States at least, especially mobile. Guys are talking to each other on mobile, happen to get on 146.52, and there's a couple of guys talking, wait for a break in the transmission and say, break, break, break. They'll stop. They'll ask, you know, do you have, you know, what's the traffic? You could tell them who you are, what the emergency is, and hopefully get everything taken care of. The 70 centimeter band UHF, that is on 446.000. That's the national simplex calling frequency on UHF and in more urban areas, uh, that may be a good choice because it has better building penetration abilities than some VHF frequencies. Now we get to the HF bands. This is my HF radio. Let's start out the very tip top end and uh, tip top end 80 meters, three, dot nine seven five megahertz uh it's often used for regional emergency nets on lower sideband 
On 40 meters, 7.250, that's a common uh, emergency frequency. Again, lower sideband. 20 meter band. This is, uh, this is good for longer distances. On 20 meters, 14.300 megahertz the, on the 20 meter band is the maritime mobile service net and the emergency traffic on upper side band. And it is good for long distances. Ships at sea will often use this frequency to um, call for distress. Uh, I have I have listened to emergencies happen, medical emergencies on small fishing boats or yachts, and they've gotten they've gotten doctors on the radio to talk people through uh, certain emergencies or get them the help that they need. HF frequencies uh, require a general license and extra for full privileges, but. Again, in a dire life and death emergency, you don't need a license. You just get on and talk. Now, because this is geared for beginners, again, I'm not going to talk about CW, but I will talk about something called, uh, it's digital. It's called JS8 Call, and it's a little more conversational. It's very, very widespread. Uh, as a matter of fact, on Mondays, I do a JS8 call net. The frequency on 40 meters is 7.078. Uh, that is the general JS8 call frequency. I do the net on there. There's some other, uh, some other folks that have emergency or prepper type nets that they do on 40 meters, and they might move it up to, say, 7.091, so they're not on that. They're not getting all the other traffic. That may be used in an emergency to summon help or to strategically get things going uh, when other modes fail. Like I've done here, you could program all your local frequencies or your frequently traveled frequencies of uh, local repeaters into your radio ahead of time. That way, if you have some kind of an emergency, you could just, I call it dialing for dollars. As good as MERS, GMRS, and CBR, they are limited in, uh, they're very limited in the distance that a, that a radio can travel. And, and guys, don't believe the radio manufacturers when they tell you that these things can go up to 40 miles. You're never going to see 40 miles with an antenna like this unless you are sitting on top of a mountain talking to somebody else sitting on top of a mountain 30 to 40 miles away with nothing in between. All right, guys, I hope this one helped you out. Uh, if you're a beginner, and you learned a little something, drop a line, hit the subscribe, give a like. If you're a more experienced radio user and you've got some suggestions for me or for everybody else, write them in the comments below. And again, give the video a thumbs up. It helps me, it helps you, it's free. And I will uh, catch you guys on the next one. I'm Bob K6UDA. I'm out of here. 7-3.